Throughout the history of human warfare, for the most part, people have tried to keep women away from war. The frontline combat and strategic planning have mainly been the responsibility of men. However, as human warfare has grown in scale, women have inevitably become involved in war to fill the manpower gap. During World War II, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force WAAF, in Britain was a large-scale female force. The Women's Auxiliary Air Force was actually established a few months before World War II, but initially, its role and scale were small. When World War II broke out in September 1939, the Royal Air Force of Britain had already started to rapidly deplete during the Battle of France. This depletion included not only expensive equipment like aircraft, but also experienced pilots, ground crew, and others. It was at this time that the role of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force was demonstrated. The unit began recruiting women with an average age between 20 and 30 in 1941, and by 1943, the total number had reached 182,000. It is important to note that the Women's Auxiliary Air Force was not an independent department. It was subject to the Air Force Act and was an important auxiliary force of the Royal Air Force, working in over 110 different industries. Many of these women did not resent their subordinate status, instead, they felt honored. Perhaps during the war, they felt proud to contribute to their country. Moreover, the units they belonged to had the word royal, which in European tradition was a symbol of honor. If they performed well, they could even be promoted. The highest commander of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force was the director, equivalent to the rank of Major General. At the end of 1939, the system was adjusted, and the position was changed to Air Force Commander. Below that were squadron officers, flight officers, and section directors, creating an independent officer system different from the Royal Air Force's marshals, air vice marshals, and squadron leaders. Because it was wartime, the working and living conditions of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force were mostly poor. In movies, we often see them working as typists, telegraph operators, restaurant servers, and other relatively easy positions. Others worked in factories, producing parachutes, clothing, etc., radar stations, communication departments, hospitals, and so on. Many members worked in dangerous positions. For example, radar stations and airports were frequent targets of enemy bombers. After bombings, they had to participate in the rescue of the wounded, and some even risked their lives to save pilots who had crashed. To facilitate their work, most of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force's bases were located within military bases, making them targets for enemy attacks. Due to the sudden increase in manpower and the scarcity of resources caused by the war, their living facilities were inadequate. Their salaries were also only two-thirds of those in the neighboring Royal Air Force, which would have surely caused an uproar in peacetime. The Royal Air Force did not allow female air crews to exist. The small number of female pilots from the Women's Auxiliary Air Force served in the Air Transport Auxiliary ATA, a civilian organization that was responsible for transporting personnel, medicine, mail, and so on. Essentially, it was a supplementary force for the Royal Air Force. In the initial stages of its establishment, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force could not command the Royal Air Force. It was only after being incorporated into the Air Force in 1941 that it gained some command authority. This was also to facilitate communication and cooperation between the two forces, and the benefit was that some female soldiers were able to use this opportunity to be promoted. Some special positions, such as intelligence analysis and radio operation, were only open to officers. Women who passed the interview had to undergo training, which included flight skills. This, learning on the job, approach was one of the reasons why female pilots were unable to participate in combat, as they lacked experience. Nevertheless, some female pilots were allowed to participate in overseas flight missions. Throughout World War II, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force played a significant role in Britain. They took on a large amount of work that would have otherwise been done by men, ensuring the normal operation of the Royal Air Force of Britain. 
After World War II, a large number of women's auxiliary Air Force members were demobilized, and by 1949, only a few hundred remained. It was then renamed the Women's Royal Air Force, and in 1994, it was fully merged with the Royal Air Force of Britain.